Good evening aspirants. Welcome to daily news analysis of Shankar Ace Academy. Today's date is 26th of June 2024. Displayed here are the articles that we are going to discuss today. So without much delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. This news article talks about a scientific phenomenon of how a potassium cyanide can cause sudden death. See, potassium cyanide when consumed will result in death by gradually arresting the supply of oxygen to our body cells. This does this by forming complexes with hemoglobin and cytochrome. Know that cytochrome is a protein which helps in respiration of cells. By doing so, this will deprive them of their capacity to transport or exchange oxygen. To understand its function, we ought to understand the basics of hemoglobin. Normally, oxygen is carried to different parts of the body from the lungs by the blood using hemoglobin. To put it simply, hemoglobin is an iron containing oxygen carrying molecule of the red blood cells. Moreover, it is made of a globular protein and four heme groups. The iron present in the in these heme complexes can bond to either an oxygen molecule or a water molecule or exchange one for the other without much difficulty. It is because of this quality hemoglobin is able to pick up oxygen from the lungs, carry it to the cells and bring water in return. So this is the normal process. Now this will undergo a change when potassium cyanide is consumed. When potassium cyanide is consumed, it splits into a potassium ion and cyanide ion. Know that this cyanide ion has a greater affinity for the ferrous ion and results in the occupation of the site which is meant for oxygen in the hemoglobin. This process is irreversible and prevents the transfer of oxygen in the blood and can cause death. Lastly, the symptoms of cyanide poisoning are giddiness, headache and bluish tink of the skin. If not treated immediately, unconsciousness and death will follow. So this is the crux of this article. Now let us see more prelims related facts about potassium cyanide. See potassium cyanide is a form of cyanide salt which contains equal number of potassium cations that is K plus and cyanide anions that is Cn minus. It is also called cyanide of potassium or cyanopotassium. The chemical formula for potassium cyanide is KCN. Now let us see the properties of potassium cyanide. See they are a crystalline salt which has no color and has high toxicity and solubility in water. It has a small bitter almonds and tastes like acid with a burning sensation. The density of potassium cyanide is 1.52 gram per centimeter cube and the melting point of potassium cyanide is 634 degrees Celsius and the boiling point of potassium cyanide is 1625 degrees Celsius. Having seen this, let us see the uses of potassium cyanide. See, it is used in the extraction of silver and gold from ores. It is also used in electro planting process. Then, it is used as a reagent in analytical chemistry. It is also widely used in the preparation of carboxylic acid and nitriles. It is used in the wet plate collodion process as a photographic fixer. It is also used in gold mining and warehouses. So, that's all about its uses. So in this article, we have discussed about hemoglobin, how potassium cyanide affects the oxygen supply, properties of potassium cyanide and its uses. So with this, let us move on to the next news article. Look at this article. Prime Minister has called for consensus and extended debates in the 18th Lok Sabha. But the initial sessions were marked by hostility between the ruling NDA and the opposition India bloc. The opposition has offered to support the NDA's speaker candidate in exchange for deputy speaker post which is a position traditionally held by the opposition but it was vacant during the last Lok Sabha term. See here both the ruling coalition and the opposition need to commit to a constructive parliamentary norms and principles of the constitution to have constructive Lok Sabha. So this is the crux of this article. So in our discussion, let us see about the structure and functions of speaker from the prelims perspective. See the speaker of Lok Sabha occupies a pivotal or crucial position in our parliamentary democracy. It has been said that while the members of parliament represent the individual constituencies, the speaker represents the full authority of the house, that is the Lok Sabha itself. The speaker symbolizes the dignity and the power of the house over which she or he is presiding. Now let us see the structural part of the office. Firstly, with respect to the election and tenure, the speaker is elected by the Lok Sabha from amongst its members as soon as the first sitting is over. The date of selection of the speaker is fixed by the president. Usually the speaker remains 
in office during the life of the Lok Sabha. However, he has to vacate his office earlier in any of the following three cases. First one, if he ceases to be a member of the Lok Sabha. Next, if he resigns by writing to the deputy speaker. And if he is removed by a resolution passed by a majority of all then members of the Lok Sabha. Such a resolution can be moved only after giving 14 days notice in advance. With the resolution for the removal of speaker is under consideration, he cannot preside at the sitting of the house, though he may be present. However, he can speak and take part in the proceedings of the house at such a time and vote in the first instant. It should be noted here that whenever the Lok Sabha is dissolved, the speaker does not vacate his office and continues till the newly elected Lok Sabha meets. So this is the structural part of this office. Now let us see the functions of speaker. Firstly, the speaker is the head of the Lok Sabha and its representatives. He is the guardian of powers and privileges of the members, the house as a whole and its committees. Also, he is the principal spokesman of the house and his decisions in all parliamentary matters is final. Note that the speaker of the Lok Sabha derives his powers and duties from three sources that is the constitution of India, the rules of procedure and conduct of business of Lok Sabha and parliamentary conventions. Secondly, as a chairperson, he maintains order and decorum in the house for conducting its business and regulating its proceedings. Also, he is the final interpreter of the provisions of Constitution of India, the rules of procedures and conduct of business of Lok Sabha, the parliamentary proceedings within the house. Thirdly, he adjourns the house or suspends the meeting in absence of a quorum. Note that the quorum to constitute a meeting of the house is one tenth of the total strength of the house. Fourthly, he does not vote in the first instance, but he can exercise a casting vote in case of a tie. Fifthly, he presides over a joint sitting of the two houses of the parliament. Such a sitting is summoned by the president to settle a deadlock between the two houses on a bill. So in this article, so we have discussed in detail about the speaker in this discussion. So with this, let us move on to the next news article. Look at this article. The Hooch tragedy in Kalakurchi has resulted in 59 deaths and over 150 hospitalizations has caused significant embarrassment to the government. This incident follows a similar tragedy last year, highlighting ongoing issues with toxic alcohol in the state despite claims of a zero tolerance policy. Methanol a recurring cause of such incidents was again identified as the culprit. The preference for cheaper illicit liquor over the state's official options has exacerbated the problem. So this is the crux of this article. In our discussion, we are going to see about the differences between ethanol and methanol. First of all, they are just two kinds of alcohol. Ethanol or ethylene alcohol falls with the chemical structure with two carbon atoms, while methanol, also known as methyl alcohol, is composed of only one carbon atom. Ethanol is usually produced by combining an ethyl group. Now let us see the difference between ethanol and methanol. Firstly, with respect to ethanol, the chemical formula of ethanol is CH3CH2OH, which is formed by linking an ethyl group that is CH3CH2 to a hydroxide group that is OH-. It is very flammable and volatile in nature. Moreover, due to the creation of hydrogen bonds, it dissolves in water. Similarly, ethanol may combine with other alcohols. It is also a colorless liquid with a faint chemical odor. Also know that ethanol functions as a weak acid. Its acidity, however, is lower than that of the water. So having seen this, let us see the properties of methanol. See, methanol or methyl alcohol is created by attaching a methyl group that is CH3 to a hydroxide group that is OH. This resulting in a chemical formula called CH3OH. It is also known as wood alcohol. It is called so because it was previously created as a byproduct of wood distillation. Know that methanol is typically synthesized by catalysis from carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. It is the most basic alcohol discovered in chemistry and it is very volatile and 
combustible it is likewise colorless and has ethanol like odor methanol may create hydrogen bonds with water and other alcohols mixing effectively with them compared to ethanol methanol has a greater acidity which is also somewhat higher than water with respect to the production over 90% of the ethanol generated worldwide is created by agricultural fermentation with the remaining produced through ethane hydration barley rice maize and wheat are examples of crops utilized here similarly for methanol it is often produced on a large scale by reforming natural gas with steam consequently a synthesized mixture is formed transformed and distilled to produce methanol with respect to physical consequences you may consume ethanol in legal alcoholic beverages and most of us know it causes drunken headaches and nausea industrially generated ethanol is dangerous and should never be consumed since it is fatal similarly methanol is exceedingly dangerous it should never be consumed breathed or come into touch with your skin even a very little dosage may cause blindness and even death so that's all about methanol and ethanol with this let us move on to the next news article look at this article about kawach system the recent train accident in darjeeling west bengal which resulted in 10 deaths has highlighted the slow deployment of kawach which is india's automatic train protection system this system designed to prevent train collisions by automatically applying brakes if a train overshoots a red signal this is crucial for railway safety the incident resulted in 10 fatalities on average 80 people die annually in train collisions in india a week after the incident railway minister ashwini reviewed the progress of an advanced version of the atp that is kawach 4.0 and directed that its installation be expedited data indicates that the availability of funds is not a problem for implementing kawach the issue lies in the slow pace of deployment so in our discussion let us learn about kawach see kawach is a cab signaling train control system with anti collision features this was developed by research design and standard organization that is rdso in collaboration with three indian vendors it is adopted as the national automatic train protection system and kawach adheres to safety integrity level 4 that is sil4 standards it functions as a vigilant watchdog over the existing signaling system alerting the loco pilot when approaching a red signal and applying automatic brakes if necessary to prevent overshooting the signal additionally the system relies sos messages during emergencies and features centralized live monitoring of train movements through network monitoring system the indian railways institute of signal engineering and telecommunication which is located in secunderabad telangana hosts the center of excellence for kawach now let us know about the components of kawach the kawach setup consists of three ens- essential components strategically integrated within the designated railway stations along the intended deployment route the first component involves the incorporation of radio frequency identification technology that is rfid into the tracks rfid employs radio waves to identify objects or individuals and utilizes to automatically read wireless device information from a distance without physical contact or line of sight the second component consists of the locomotive serving as the driver's cabin which is equipped with rfid's reader computer and a brake interface equipment the third component is radio infrastructure which includes towers and modems they are installed at railway stations to support the system's functionality now moving on to see the challenges despite its advanced features the deployment of kawach faces significant challenges primarily due to its high cost and limited coverage the cost of deployment is 50 lakh per kilometer and currently it covers only 1500 km of the rail network despite adopting kawach as a national atp system in 2022 it has been installed on only about 2% of the track length and less than 1% of the engines this limited coverage poses a substantial challenge to comprehensive implementation across india's extensive 68000 km rail network so this is all about kawach with this let us move on to the next news article 
look at this article it talks about the agnipat scheme and challenges it has faced and the probability to revamp it so let's discuss about this scheme in brief and the challenges associated with it as covered in this news article so what is this agnipat scheme see it is a scheme for recruitment of soldiers below the rank of commissioned officers they are recruited for all the three services of the armed forces see this scheme was approved by the government of india on 14th of june 2022 all the recruits will be hired only for a four year period personnel recruited under this scheme are to be called as agni veers which will be a new military rank know that the scheme is open to young individuals aged between 17.5 and 21 years the recruitment process is transparent and merit based involving physical test medical examinations and written exams after completing the 4 year tenure agni veers have the option to exit with a financial package called seva nidhi package this is a lump sum amount accumulated throughout their service period now moving forward let us see about its background see firstly agni bath scheme was introduced to enhance youthful profile of armed forces so that they are at their best fighting abilities and increased risk taking abilities at all times for instance the average age of armed forces currently 32 years it will be reduced to 26 years with agnipath's implementation secondly a leaner military and reduced benefits will significantly lower the defense budget which has been a major concern for governments for many years over the past decade pay and allowance and pension expenses have increased from 50% to 55% thirdly after serving for 4 years the agni veers would be discharged and it is expected that they would contribute to the skilled workforce in the various sectors now we shall look at some of the associated challenges as said in this article firstly there is an increasing instance of under recruitment since covid-19 period additionally the low conversion rate of 25% from the agni veers to the regular soldiers is going to further accentuate the shortfall secondly there are concerns about the job security pension benefits and future prospects of the agni veers after their four year tenure thirdly the change from class based recruitment replaced with all india all class recruitment could harm the armed forces because it affects their managerial and operational efficiency fourthly selecting the 25% of short term contracted soldiers to be retained may lead to unhealthy competition if not addressed this could become a serious issue and harm the unit's health in long run so that's all about this agni veer scheme with this let us move on to the next news article look at this article this year's neet scores and ranks were inflated causing many candidates to miss out on their desired colleges coaching and admission centers run by business tycoons are facing backlash because their advice did not help many students secure preferred seats these centers are now using social media to improve their image allegations of cheating and paper leakage have surfaced and despite investigations paper leakage remains a persistent problem neat is the largest exam under one exam one nation model with a vast number of candidates and conducted in multiple languages the quality of exam and fees very widely government college seats are relatively affordable costing a few lakh while private colleges can cost few crores there are many criticisms about this exam as mentioned by the author of this editorial in this context let us discuss this topic using our main sans rating practice let me read out the question discuss the challenges and irregularities faced by the neat exam suggest measures to address the issues in improving the integrity and transparency of this exam see this topic comes under gs paper 2 so let us start with an introduction the national eligibility come entrance test that is neat is highly competitive exam in india for students aspiring to pursue undergraduate medical and dental courses despite its crucial role in shaping the future aspiring medical professionals neat has faced several challenges and irregularities that have raised concern about its integrity and transparency so this can be your part of the answer now let us see now let us move on to the body part of the answer here we have to list out the challenges and irregularities in neat firstly cheating and mal practices instances of cheating impersonation and paper leaks have been reported organized rackets often exploit vulnerabilities in the system undermining the credibility of the examination secondly infrastructure many examination centers lack adequate infrastructure including proper seating arrangements ventilation and sanitation facilities this affect the performance of the candidates we must also note 
in the socio-economic disparities. First one, access to resources. See, students from rural areas and economically disadvantaged backgrounds often lack access to quality coaching and study materials, putting them at a disadvantage compared to their urban counterparts. Some students may face challenges due to their socio-economic background, such as lack of access to quality education, coaching, resources, or guidance. These factors can hamper their preparation and performance in NEET. Next one is language barrier. While NEET is conducted in multiple languages, students from non-English and non-Hindi speaking region often face difficulties. As NEET is conducted only in 13 languages, some students may face difficulty in understanding the question or expressing their answers in a language that is not their mother tongue or medium of instruction. Next one is high risk factor. NEET exam is highly competitive exam with lakhs of students appearing every year. The students have only one chance to clear the exam in a year and secure a seat in their desired college. If they fail to do so, they have to wait for another year or opt for other courses. This can cause stress, anxiety and depression among the students who have high expectations of themselves and their parents. Now we can list out the measures to improve integrity and transparency. First one is strengthening the security measures. Implementing biometric verification at multiple stages of examination process can help prevent impersonization and other fraudulent activities. Installing CCTV cameras in examination centers can deter cheating and ensure real-time monitoring of the examination process. Second one, uniform question papers. Developing a standardized question bank and using sophisticated algorithms to ensure uniformity in the difficulty levels of the question paper across all languages and sessions. Constituting expert committees to review and vet question papers to ensure consistency and accuracy. Third one is upgrading the examination centers. Investing in upgrading the infrastructure of the exam centers including better seating, lighting and sanitation facilities. Ensuring robust technical support during online examinations to handle any glitches promptly. Fourth one is addressing socioeconomic disparities. Providing scholarships and financial assistance to economically disadvantaged students to help them access quality coaching and study materials. Enhancing the availability of study materials in regional languages and ensuring accurate translations of question papers. Fifth one is transparency in processes. Making the process and criteria for question paper setting, evaluation and result compilation transparent and publicly accessible. Establishing a robust and efficient grievance redressal mechanism to address the concerns of candidates promptly and fairly. So this can be our body part of the answer. Now we can conclude like this. While NEET faces significant challenges and irregularities, implementing a comprehensive set of measures focused on enhancing security, standardized question papers, improving infrastructure, addressing socioeconomic disparities, and ensuring transparency can significantly improve the integrity and fairness of the exam. These steps are crucial in maintaining public trust and ensuring that the best candidates are selected for the medical and dental education in India. So this is how you can write your main answer. So with this, now we shall move on to the prelims practice question discussion. Look at the first question. Which organization developed the Kawaj system? Indian Space Research Organization, Research Design and Standards Organization, Defense Research and Development Organization, Bharat Heavy Electrical Organization. Here the correct answer is option B. Research Design and Standard Organization. Next question. With reference to flex fuel car, consider the following statements. It has an internal combustion engine, but unlike a regular petrol or diesel vehicle, this can run on more than one type of fuel or even a mix of fuels. Yes, this statement is correct. Next, the most common versions use a blend of petrol and ethanol or methanol, but these engines are also equipped to run on 100% petrol or ethanol as well. So this statement is also correct. Here they are asking which of the above statements are correct. So the correct answer is option C, both 1 and 2. Next question, with reference to the Deputy Speaker of Lok Sabha, consider the following statements. First, as per the rules of procedure and conduct of business in Lok Sabha, the election of Deputy Speaker shall be held on such date as the Speaker may fix, Is this statement is correct. There is a mandatory provision that the election of a candidate as Deputy Speaker of Lok Sabha shall be from either the principal opposition party or the ruling party. 
Yes, this statement is also correct. Next, the deputy speaker has the same power of the speaker when presiding over the sitting of house and no appeal lies against his rulings. This statement is also correct. Next, the well-established parliamentary practice regarding the appointment of deputy speaker is that the motion is moved by the speaker and duly seconded by the prime minister. See, this statement is incorrect. There is no such practice in our parliament. Here they are asking which of the above statements are correct. So the answer is option B, 1, 2 and 3. Displayed here is the mains practice question for you today. Understand the question and try to answer it in the comment section. With this, we come to the end of this news article discussion. If you like the video, do like, share and subscribe to Shankar AS Academy. Now thank you so much for watching.